Hello, my crafty friend, and thank you so much for tuning in to see the flip through of my completed magic carpet tall and slim junk journal. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the cover, seeing as I've made a how-to or a craft with me video where I make it. Um, all I'm going to say is that the base fabric that's kind of wrapped around the entire piece is from a scarf that was a gift from my lovely friend May, who lives in Saudi Arabia. She's from Saudi Arabia and she has blessed me with so many gorgeous items that are Arabic. And each of them is very magical looking and very exotic and very detailed and just so beautiful that I felt compelled to create a journal to honor the culture from which they come. And so the cover inspiration here is my magical friend May and her crafty gifts, as well as the idea of the magic carpet as sort of a cultural symbol of Eastern magic and mystery. So I grew up as a child in the 90s, which means I was there when Aladdin was in theaters. And I remember being so captivated by the concept of a magic carpet ride, sitting down on a carpet and being able to go anywhere to fly. And so I was really hoping this journal would capture kind of a combination of the authentic aesthetic of the Arabic world, thanks to my friend May, plus the nostalgic magical factor that I think a lot of us hold when we think of the view that we had of the Arabian world as children. So for my generation, that might mean the Disney movie Aladdin, but for others that might mean hearing stories from the Arabian Nights in storybook form. Whatever the case, I feel like I'm quite happy with how this cover turned out. The centerpiece here is, of course, a miniature magic carpet. And this was actually a coaster, kind of in the trim of a mouse pad, um, gifted to me by the very talented and beautiful Cat Stone, whose art I recently featured in a, a video, just sharing some of the pieces that she has sent to me. Um, and she herself actually spent seven years living in Iran. So it's kind of cool to have pieces of Arabic fabric that are from people who have been there and lived it. Uh, one still currently doing so and one um, for whom I, I feel the Arabian aesthetic is just a deep part of her story. So yeah, so that's the cover. This little mini piece holds the tie closure, which is just a piece of sari, sari type fabric. This was just a piece I thrifted. Um, but the color combination is kind of inspired by the oranges and the blues and the base fabric as well as in that little magic carpet. And I've attached a little bit of bling to it. Just a little faux diamond earring, a little faux pearl earring, and a long golden tassel earring. So yeah, now is where we get to the new part, <laughs> if you saw the craft with me video. So inside, the inside front cover, I've made a little flip using some embroidered gold on black sari trim. That lifts up to reveal a pocket made out of this gorgeous golden trim that May sent me which at first glance might look like it's just gold, but if you look more closely, it's kind of a gold on gold or a tone on tone golden script with what looks to me like Arabic writing. And it's just so unique and so cool. And behind that pocket is this vibrant stained glass sort of Arabic tile motif fabric that I've lined it with. It was a little bit bright and busy, so I've kind of toned it down by putting a piece from an art history textbook in front of it. And this is a section of the Hagia Sophia, which is a beautiful historic building 
that has gone back and forth between being a church and the mosque and the church and the mosque in Istanbul for many centuries. And a little print of Aladdin and Jasmine flying on their magic carpet over Arabia. This piece is one of the printable pieces in my magic carpet digital kit, which I've used for this book. So there will be book pages taken out of art history texts and pages like this one here, which is a coffee dyed Arabic design page that my friend May gave to me. Um, but besides those, I've stuck with only my digital kit throughout this book so I can kind of show an example of what's inside it. And so this page here has this really cool paper that the pad actually says right on it, printed in Saudi Arabia. So it is genuinely a piece of Arabian um, cultural ephemera. And then the little earring piece glued to the bottom is a piece that I found at a local, not even a, not, not really an antique store and not really a yard sale, but sort of like a swap meet or a flea market. And it was part of a larger necklace and it just perfectly embodies the aesthetic of Arabian splendor. Flipping that little mini page over, I made a pocket on the back of this coffee dyed page using some beautiful black and gold sequin trim from May. And in that pocket, I put a bookmark that I found among many beautifully stamped and stenciled and painted pages from Cat Stones. So this is some original hand done work, really beautiful. I was going to glue it down as a pocket or a belly band somewhere, but I felt like it was just pretty on its own as a bookmark. So I've left it untouched. And yet another journaling card from my Arabian Nights printable kit. And please pardon the glare. It's a little bit, it's that time of year when our seasons are changing and so the lighting can be unpredictable. I'm trying to kind of put up a little bit of shade here by angling cardboard boxes, which I have all over the place because of my move coming up. There we go, that should be better. So this page is a beautiful coffee dyed stenciled page made by May. And I added a tab to it using just a little bit of dotted vintage fabric with some medallions that I cut out from Sari trim. And it's the same on each side. So I made a large upper pocket using one of the journaling cards from the printable kit and decorated it with these two adorable little stamps, one showing a rider on horseback and one showing the genie coming out of the bottle. And these are also part of the printables, the tiny ones and the larger one. In the upper tuck, I put some of the decorative strips from the printable kit. I just kind of folded them into a little trifold, which could make a very cute little envelope if you chose to glue it down there. Um, but it can also just be a little bit of blank on the other side paper for journaling. I tried to make this one kind of a healthy, equal combination of decorated space and actual journaling space. I love this image here. It's so art deco in aesthetic with the character who seems to be leaping from a building top and another Arabian Nights illustration. And I found these in the public domain because they are so old that they no longer hold copyrights. So you, of course, if you don't want to buy my printable kit, I encourage you to do a, a image search if you're inspired to make a similar journal and just do an image search for vintage Arabian Nights or antique Arabian Nights illustrations because quite a few cool ones come up. Um, so then the next page here, I folded it over to become kind of a skinny journal page, but this is also out of my printable kit. 
And I love this scene here with all of the birds. On the other side, I made a little tuck spot using a miniature version of the large carpet pattern that's printed on the back side of this here. And that's also in the digital kit. I've made quite a large collection of what I call full page faded or full page pale designs. And that's so that you can print something on the reverse of the highly ornamental paper um, that can be used for journaling, but that still has some color and some decoration to it. And so this is what that carpet looks like right here. And then when it's blown up with the saturation reduced, it comes out to this really soft minty green, perfect for writing on. And under that little tuck spot, I've stuck a really fun Arabian Nights illustration with this girl in a tree in such a cool Thai looking dance costume. Maybe it's not a dance costume, maybe it's just a traditional costume, but when I was in Thailand, that's the kind of headdress all the dancers wore. So the next page here is one of the full page, full color prints from the kit. And I've clipped to it a print of a painting by Cat Stone that just embodies the magic of fairy tales and ancient Arabia. It's from one of her stories called The Moon, The Maidens and the Magic Slippers. And I'm in the process of reading that story and I love it so, 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 so much. I'm thinking in the future to do a journal entirely based on this story as the theme. But I couldn't resist putting a print of this right here in this journal just because it's so gorgeous and so lush. The way she's painted the border in this illustration with the stars against the dark blue sky and these kind of almost Moroccan looking tiles along the bottom, the big cushions, and of course the magic slippers. It's just so gorgeous. I could stare at this illustration. Um, I've written down that it's by Cat Stone just so that whoever gets the journal will be able to look her up and see her other art. And it's backed with a faded print, one of the faded carpet prints that I reduced to one quarter the size so that it would fit um, this copy. And that's just on cardstock. And then clipped in on the other side, I've put just one of the mini carpets from the digital kit, left blank on the back for some writing space. And one of the eye talismans I did kind of a page of things that you could print out as fussy cuts or stickers. This was one of them. And I left it loose so that whoever gets the journal can decide where to keep it. A couple more of the illustrations in the bottom left-hand corner, one used as a tuck spot here. I just love the lions accompanying this boy. And behind it, a larger journaling card from the printable kit with such cool theatrical costumes and kind of set design look. And every time I look at these, I see something different. I've seen this image so many times while working on the kit and while cutting it out. And I've only just now noticed those cute little night owls in the top left-hand corner. Maybe cute, maybe ominous, <laughs> but they sure are fun. And so that sits there. The next page has a full page fabric flip and it's made out of fabric that May sent me in her first happy mail to me. And it was labeled traditional fabrics from Saudi Arabia. So this would be kind of a traditional design in their, in their textiles and their clothing. So that flips up to show just the, the back or the the wordy page of an art history textbook, but the little tabs that go down the side of the page are also from the kit. These are on a page of, um, these four squares are on a page of journaling cards and they're printed 
as little squares. So I've just folded them in half and then glued them to the side of this page to be kind of like decorative tabs. And then this one is more of those Arabian Nights themed postage stamps from the printable kit, also just folded in half and then glued over the edge of the page to give some more color. I adore this black and white picture of some Turkish architecture. Just stunning. This is also a page from the kit. Now, if you look at the digital kit and you don't see this tall, skinny red page, that's because it's one of the pages from um, Full Page. I think it's just called Full Page. And it's a full carpet, um, like antique carpet, but made into a print. What I've done is I've printed it as print two per page, and my printer automatically made two long skinny versions of it back to back and I love how that turned out for a tall journal and there's just some fussy cut elements out of a sari on the bottom to add a bit of texture so yeah if you get printable kits I encourage you to play around with different printer settings like print multiples per page and click full page and just see how it turns out because this turned out cooler than I thought it might. On the other side, this is one of the other full page pale prints. I really love that light blue. And I added a pocket to it out of this pretty white and gold sari trim. And into that pocket, I stuck two really, really fun little things. And these are prints in polymer clay from a stamp seal that traces back to the Harappan civilization, um, also known as the Indus Valley Civilization, which stretched from the Indus River Valley in North India all the way to Afghanistan. And they did trade with parts of Iran and down all the way um, to the Southern parts of India one of the world's most ancient civilizations. And I was lucky enough to be able to order a stamp seal that I should have had here to show you. If anybody is curious, let me know in the comment and I'll bring it into the next video to show you what it looks like. Um, but anyway, I, I found it in a Thai antique dealer's store and just had to have it. It's a double-sided stamp seal. And so these would have been used for, well, as of now, the language from the Indus Valley region, the written language, which we can see a little bit here in that character, which is a letter, as well as here, the circle uh, around a dot. Um, the language has not yet been translated, so we don't really know what the words mean, but seals like this, seal stamps would be used to mark property, to sign tablets, to you authenticate that a message is coming from the person who it's said to be from. But yeah, I think they're really cute. So this one shows a character walking towards what looks to be a very, very large bird. And this one shows someone holding what might be kind of a, a an early version of a trident or a trishul, although it has four spokes, not just, not just three. Um, and what I like to believe is happening in the image is that he's petting <laughs> or greeting this animal here, but we don't know. Anyhow, I've tucked those into the pocket just because it's a really cool little piece. And since that ancient civilization stretched all the way from, you know, India into the Middle East, I see it kind of as a precursor civilization to, you know, to the civilizations that became Arabia. So ancient ancestral design elements. Okay, so this page here, I kind of made a fold over slash flip up 
out of one of the prints from my digital kit that was actually an antique book cover. Um, this was one of the book covers for the bound version of 1001 Arabian Nights, the story. And I actually originally thought that I would make this as a standard sized and shaped book instead of a long skinny one. And this was going to be the cover image. And so if you want to do that kind of a book, this could very easily be printed on cardstock. You could go in with a gold paint pen and kind of go over some of the details and the wings or the skyline or the moon and the stars. It would look really, really cool. Um, but I think it also looks quite nice. Just fold it over. And I've clipped in another of the vintage illustrations made into a journaling card on the other side here. But yeah, I think this would make a very fun book cover, wouldn't it? I just, I adore the architecture. It's so ornate and so beautiful. So another of the carpet pages. And on this side, I've put a little piece of fabric that my grandma brought back for me from a trip that she and my granddad took years ago to the Middle East. And on a little bulb pin, just added a cute little moon charm with stars. This page flips out to show just a little piece of the Taj Mahal. And again, an illustration of the magic carpet ride. This piece with some really cool gridded sari trim. Flips open to show a map of ancient Asia. So where we see Arabia, Persia, into India. Beautiful architecture. A very pale carpet page with a little fussy cut medallion out of some sari fabric that I wish the colors were coming out better on camera here, but they're really, really nice forest green, cherry red, robin's egg blue, and just a little strip of decorative trim from the printed kit. And then on the other side, so remember how I said play around with your printer settings. This is one of the full page patterns from my printable kit. I kind of find with my printer, and maybe with everyone's, and my apologies if that's the case, uh, this particular design kind of prints up a bit blurry, so I chose to see what would happen if I printed nine per page, and it looks really cool as a grid like that. So I've put a medallion in corresponding colors to the pink and orange page, and then green and red on the yellower page. But I think that looks really cool layered over that. And I just folded one of the other vintage storybook illustrations. The beautiful dancer here kind of took the male gaze out of the picture <laughs> by folding that over, but also because it wouldn't fit. I'm just inked on the back to look a little bit more vintage. The next page here has another flip up of traditional design fabric that May sent me. And this folds over to reveal a magical lamp that I've put on this design page in the printable kit with some really cool carpets and one of the beautiful illustrated medallions. These are also wallpaper pages from the kit. This page I think is one of the most fun pages that I worked on. I have four little envelopes that are part of the kit and I've printed out one of each of them and held them onto the page using little strips of vintage ribbon or kind of like vintage lace. And so you have the spaces between the envelopes would still make some good writing space if you use your journals to write. And yeah, this is what the little envelopes look like on the other side. So I, I didn't measure them perfectly when I designed this kit, which means 
one of them and the yellow one doesn't fully fit like where the the bottom flap reaches to about here and the top flap starts at about there so if I hadn't glued some gold trim to it there would have been kind of a, a gap in the paper which doesn't look very good so that's how I solved that problem so if you've been frustrated with digital kits maybe mine or maybe others that you know the stuff doesn't always look the way you think it's going to look I find it's nice to have some scraps of fabrics and trims and crafty things laying around so that you can you know work with it make it look how you want it to look and I actually think it looks prettier with the gold lace than if it had fit perfectly in the beginning so sometimes sometimes our accidents can be little blessings in disguise but yeah each of the little envelopes has a matching miniature magic carpet that matches the cover of the envelope so kind of like little mini stationaries great places to write secret messages or special magical notes to sell I really love that pink and orange. It reminds me of some of the color schemes I would see in India. And each one I've stuck a different little embroidered flower to. As you probably noticed, I guess I don't need to point out every little thing in these videos because you have eyes, <laughs> you can see. This one, I, I think this one is my favorite though. I love blue and purple together. And although the camera's not quite picking it up, the lighter color in here is a very faint, sort of a lilac-y purple. This one luckily fits. <laughs> and this is one of the things I love about a tall, slim journal format is that the, the format of a tall slim journal just lends itself so beautifully to having pages of samples and strips and things like this going down a book page which you could do it in other other book formats too but it just looks extra special I think in a tall journal the next page is one of the medallions from my printable kit this is how I've used one of the decorative strips from the printable kit. I turned it into a tuck spot, sort of like a belly band, but running vertical instead of horizontally. Another one of the vintage illustrations. And I thought this one was super cool because it's showing Prince Ali buying his magic carpet. And of course I put it next to a carpet page in a color scheme similar to the carpet that Prince Ali is buying. I think this might just be my favorite page. What, well, I have a lot of favorites. You hear me say that in every video. I have lots of favorites. But I love how this one all came together aesthetically. I made a giant pocket using a piece of trim that I discovered synchronistically is exactly the size and shape of the pages in this book so I just cut it and glued it and I love it and I've stuffed that pocket with pages out of a book about the Taj Mahal and they're just really lovely black and white illustrations on those pages not illustrations black and white um, prints of photographs so I've tried to put some original ephemera even though this book is heavily reliant on my printable set. Case in point, this little beautiful precious but crumbling page right here which is from a children's school book from 1953 from Egypt and this was in one of my mail, Happy Mails from May. Add some really cool texture to the book. On this page here, 
I fussy cut one of the images from my printable kit and this shows just a really cool Arabic style talisman or amulet with the protective hand, the evil eye. It's really, really nice to look at and to hold it in place. I've put a real version of what we see printed. So I found just a beautiful cubic zirconia charm of that hand and a really pretty glass eye bead. And I just made these into a little dangling pendant so you could actually, oops, pardon me for being out of focus. You could actually take this off the paper clip and wear it as a piece of jewelry if you choose to. But I kind of like that little mirrored look. We have the paper version and we have the real version. And this piece of fabric from my friend May flips up to reveal a couple of little magic carpet journaling cards that are sitting in this little belly band, which is made out of other magic carpet strips and decorated with yet other magic carpet strips. So yeah, I think that a lot of this book is just put together to look beautiful. I just adore the aesthetics of the color schemes, the, the designs of the carpets. Um, there's just so much magic in the Arabian, the beauty of Arabian jewelry and fabric and stuff like that. And I printed this four per page so I could get the full image as a mini page. Another page from the kit using some jewelry to decorate. Another one of the full carpet pages. Okay, so this, this I think, remember how I said I'll say a lot of them are my favorite. Oops, pardon the sounds in the background. This I think really truly is my favorite, favorite, favorite of all the favorite pages. I've put some prints that I made of a paper doll with two of her outfits painted by the lovely and talented Cat Stone. So there's our paper doll and inspired by just the colors and the beauty of Arabia, her first outfit here includes a veil and a scarf and just stunning draping fabrics. So I just printed these true to the size that she made them. And then this gorgeous dress here that has chains that kind of remind me of the belly dancing aesthetic. I just think it's the most beautiful paper doll with the most beautiful dresses I've ever seen. And I'm so grateful to have them. I couldn't resist kind of sharing some of that magic with whoever, whoever chooses to take this book home. Um, I should show you the backs. I've left the backs white but I've kind of inked them in a way that it's meant to kind of follow the flow of the fabric so I've kind of accentuated her body a little bit and inked it up to show the movement so that's this dress here I have kind of did that on the Arabian piece as well so kind of how the fabrics are layered and then on the back of the doll, I've tried to kind of fill in as if I were using charcoal or something to color her body. So what's fun about these being blank on the other side, other than that bit of ink, is that you can use them as journaling cards too and write messages if you choose to. But yeah, and I've, I've tried to pick little carpet pieces from my printable kit that match the colors in the dresses. And so we have the orange with this beautiful dress that has the orange towards the bottom. And then the bright green to match her bright green sleeves here. And then the doll herself goes right behind this one here with her little hand out. So yeah, I just, I really love the way this 
this spread turns out. Kat's art is just so magical. And thank you again, Kat, if you're seeing this. And thank you, May, for inspiring the whole book if you're seeing this. I think this is, like I said, my absolute favorite. This opens up to show another of the medallions. This is also a page in my kit. And then we're at the center of the signature. And the center is another Saudi Arabian calligraphy page from May, but I've coffee dyed it with some really pretty lace and folded it so that the designed part meets at the center. The beads I used on the dangle in this one are lapis lazuli, which is from Afghanistan, and turquoise, which has been sacred to many cultures there for a very long time. One of my old friends when I worked in Vancouver, a co-worker of mine named Hinushin, was from Iran. And she actually gave me a turquoise ring and told me that turquoise is very sacred to the pre-Islamic culture of Iran. She herself practiced Zoroastrianism, and she said that a lot of their ornaments are made of turquoise. So I felt turquoise and lapis, it goes with not only the colors in these papers, but also it has some energy that's associated with that part of the world. And in modern crystal healing belief, I wear lots of turquoise and lapis myself in my day-to-day -day life because they are stones that co correspond with the third eye and the throat chakra. So it's for intuitive wisdom, opening your psychic centers and communicating with clarity. So wonderful stones to have in a journal. Who wouldn't want more psychic wisdom and communication skill? And between the two is just a very pretty Czech glass bead that has some pretty gypsy-like aesthetic qualities. I love this illustration. And actually, when I was playing with this book before today's flip through, found that it's quite fun to position our paper doll here as if she's extremely in the foreground and kind of playing in this market. How cute is that? She could be in that little street scene. Posing in front of that little street scene maybe is more like it. Okay, I promise no more playing with the dolls. I'll move on. Uh, this page here, I made a little tuck spot out of one of the jewelry pieces in my printable kit. I had so much fun designing this kit because I, I made the kit that I wanted to make a journal out of. And what I love to add in my journals are pieces of jewelry. And so I found this one and removed all the background from it, cleaned up the file, and enlarged it on a sheet of kind of things that could be fussy cut. And this is how it looks when it's fussy cut and then glued down just on the edges. And so I've used it to hold these little strips of paper that can be used to decorate by whoever buys the journal. They can also be cute if you cut them out, say along the line here and here, and then fold them in half. You could make such adorable little mini book covers that I might do someday, but time is quite precious for me now. As you know, I've got six days left, or I shouldn't say as you know. For those who watch my videos regularly, they may know. If you don't know, I'm moving. Uh, not, not today, but next Saturday is my official moving day. So yeah, this will be my last journal in this apartment. Actually, the video I upload next Saturday, for those who are my regulars, if you're curious, it's going to be the final flip through of my giant hoarder journal that I've been working on for as long as I've been living where I live now. Um, I've shown little glimpses and little teasers of it from time to time, but because I know for a fact that I'm not going to have enough time to make an entire journal for next week, I'm going to make my last journal flip through from this apartment, a flip through of the journal I've been working on the whole time I'm here. 
Anyway, maybe after that I'll have time to do some cute little mini books out of these. This particular strip I had to show you up close because after dragging and dropping little mini prints of this particular carpet, I didn't notice until today when I went to work that it looks like a little owl. Every time these two edges come together, you get just such a cute little textile art owl popping up. Interesting, isn't it, that those owls are visible here and that there were little owls in that Arabian Night vintage illustration too. Anyhow, this is all from the kit. I love, 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 love this antique manuscript page. Another vintage illustration tucked into a tuck spot made from an etched carnelian, engraved carnelian with some turquoise detailing that just perfectly matches the colors in that carpet. The other side, a little magic lamp. The other side of that page from 1953 some purple beaded trim down the side of this page. A little genuine vintage stamp from Pakistan that shows really cool Arabic architecture. This is an actual moving little metal wheel in the center of this medallion. And this page flips over to show just some really pretty tile wrapping paper that I thrifted and just glued down. This um, decorative jewelry piece, I painted some gold acrylic paint around the edges to make it look like it's real jewelry. And then this can be used as a pocket or a tuck spot. And I've left it empty just because the book was getting too fat. <laughs> so maybe whoever buys it would like to tuck something there. Uh, this piece here, as well as this circular piece, were in the happy mail from Kat. So thank you, Kat, for just sending the perfect items to go into this journal here. A little bit of sari trim. Another traditional Arabic design fabric from May that flips up to show some collage space or some writing space, however you choose to use that page. And of course, the link to my Etsy shop will be in the video description below. So if you decide that you have to have this book, you can go there to find it from an art history textbook. I've seen the Taj Mahal. I've been there um, when I was in India. And my two friends who I was traveling with, um, we only had time to spend one day in Agra, which is where the Taj Mahal is located. And so we had to make the choice between a tour of the Taj Mahal or a tour of Vrindavan, which is the birthplace of Lord Krishna, where the Ras Lila took place. And with our interests in mind, I'm sure you wouldn't be surprised to know we chose to go to Vrindavan. But our tour guide did take us to the Taj Mahal and said, even if you're not going in, at least come look at it up close from outside the gates and so I've seen this view which is pretty cool and in retrospect I kind of wish that I had insisted to my friends let's make well we'll say one extra day what's one less day <laughs> in Haridwar but anyhow some little washi tape strips in every book I like to include a little bluebird of happiness so in this book here she is or here he is, that little bluebird of happiness on the washi tape. A little piece of jewelry that I thrifted. It's a single earring and that crescent moon, upturned crescent moon is very Arabic in design. This would make a great page to collage over. It's just out of an art history textbook. It was at the beginning of the section about Arabia. And so we see ancient Mesopotamian statuary as well as 
medieval style architecture. Just gorgeous stuff. This is an entire page of washi tape samples, all with kind of an arabesque influence. Some tassel trim hanging over that page. This is actually a big pocket, again, left for whoever buys the book. Love that architecture. This is just a little strip of vintage wallpaper that has very pretty pink lotuses. And I just felt like that pink lotus looks a lot like the lotus flowers we see in a lot of the Arabic carpets. And then this is a little piece of embroidered flower trim from India. The other side of that lovely coffee dyed paper from me. The other side of that lovely coffee dyed calligraphy paper. May gave me the paper and I did the coffee dyeing. And then finally we're at the back page. I say finally. Hopefully you enjoy the length of these videos. I get I get positive and negative feedback both about my video length, but I'm sorry, I can't help myself. I like to talk about the things I put in my journals. So yeah, this big pocket is made from the scarf that folds over the edge and I felt like one of my journals wouldn't be complete without da, 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 da. <laughs> some ledger from most of it is from the 1960s this page is from the 50s 1959 and I've folded it in fours and so it kind of opens like this and I feel like this is the wow factor in the book. This is the coolest thing I think. This is my favorite thing to put in journals. It's a sampler page of all different embroidered and fringed sari trims. This one of them kind of tore so let me just redo that as I talk to you here. I had to do it off camera. I had forgotten to pin one in. But yeah, I just think these are so much fun and so pretty. And what do you do with them? What don't you do with them? <laughs> so you could keep this just to look at as a pretty collection of embroidered sari trims. Or you could take them off. Um, the pins just pull out. Careful, they're sharp. They are straight pins. Um, but you could put them, pull them out and use these in textile art, textile collage, make them into tabs. Um, replace these with other little bits or use them as flip up to do some secret journaling write little messages beneath each little piece that could be fun but yeah I, I think from now on I'm going to have to do a sampler page of sorry trims for every journal because I just love the way they look having a little collection of lots of different little crafty bits so there we have it. That is my magic carpet themed junk journal. This time in a tall, skinny version. The printable kit is of course available in my Etsy shop and so will be this journal as of the time I published the video. Last but not least, whenever I make a journal, I like to wear a ring that kind of represents the theme and matches the style to give as a gift with purchase to whoever buys it. So today's ring is this mandala of hearts with red, like pinkish red plastic, but made to look like rubies. That to me just looks like the kind of thing you'd see inlaid in fancy Arabic architecture or as the central medallion of a carpet design or as an opulent piece of jewelry. So even though it's just a thing that I found at a thrift shop for cheap, I think it looks really, really cool. And especially when it's tied into place at the side of this book in that orange sari trim. So there we have it, the magic carpet. I hope you enjoyed watching this little flip through. If you buy the book, I hope you love it as much as I do. And either way, I hope this video has inspired you to get crafting and maybe get journaling. 
so much love to you. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.